Hey, it's Rick Jensen, fellow client of Dan White, financial consultant specializing in retirement income, having a conversation now with Professor John Ray Bolt. John, you're a professor at the university. Tell us uh, what you teach. I teach material science and engineering. So you do a lot of research. Yes, I do. And when it came to retirement planning, when did you start researching that? Most recently, you know, I started thinking more seriously about it, maybe five or six years ago. So if you've been doing this for so many years and you've talked to many financial advisors, why did you choose Dan White? Because he's he's honest. Because <laughs> we had a number of of different experiences with financial planners and they wouldn't tell us everything so when whenever we ask a question he gives us the good the bad and the ugly so we actually know where we stand when we make a decision that's a pretty good referral when you have a university professor saying I teach PhD students oh and by the way I've researched Dan White and I recommend him mm -hmm. give Dan a call 888-690-8820 Dan White and Associates 888-690-8820 call now listen to On the Money with Dan White Sunday mornings at 7 on WDEL the following segment is sponsored by Daniel A. White and Associates. It does not necessarily reflect the views of WDEL or Forever Media. Rick Jensen on 1150 AM, 101.7 FM, WDEL. Actually, I've been a client of Dan White, Dan White and Associates, for many, many years. And Dan's always had very, very good advice for me. In fact, uh, last fall, he and I were talking about the markets, uh, the new administration, uh, the Fed making all sorts of noises about uh, raising... Uh, interest rates, inflation and such, and uh, I made my own decision based upon these conversations. I, I made my own decision. I used to be like 80% into the market with all my rollover IRAs, individual stocks, mostly. In fact, uh, all of that was individual companies, uh, not the mutual funds and such. I got mutual fund in my 401k. So uh, I started selling off, and by the beginning of January of, of this year, I was about 20% in the market. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm really glad because uh, I don't know if you've made money in the market right now. What'd you buy? Oil? <laughs> it's uh, Lockheed Martin. I, I don't even know how they're doing. Always great advice, and uh, and I've taken his advice uh, over the years. So on the phone right now is Dan Simon. He works with Dan White, Dan White and Associates, financial planners, specializing in retirement income. I listen to a whole lot of different people, and Dan uh, Simon, as you know, I've listened to Dan White and you guys for many, many years. I'm glad I have. So I'm glad you're here uh, every Wednesday after the news at 1.30. It's uh, somebody from Dan White and Associates with a little advice, a little knowledge of what's going on in the world. So how are you, man? I'm good, Rick. How are you this afternoon? Uh, concerned, worried. <laughs> well, you know, I, I keep saying, oh, opportunities in the markets, yet I don't trust what's going on with the Fed. I don't even know how many times they're uh, they're planning on raising the rate this year. I heard four, I heard six. I mean, do you, are you getting anything consistent uh, from the Fed? I mean, I think the consistency comes down to the fact that they are going to raise rates. Uh, it's just a matter as to, you know, how much they're actually going to raise them, how many times they're going to raise them. I personally think it's long overdue, uh, but it's just a matter of a, a wait and see game at this point. Yeah, so there are many of us uh, who are on the sidelines, and there's some, there's some people I know who actually have the time to spend more uh, of their time, you know, researching the markets, and it's almost like day trading now. I mean, I talked to a guy who does this on a, you know, semi-professional basis, pretty much what he does for a living, and uh, he said, "Yeah," he said, "I've never been a day trader, but right now." It kind of feels that way, and I'm thinking, well, that's not exactly a long-term state of mind. So, um, so what are you guys uh, advising right now with your clients? You know, when it when it's the market, it's got to be long-term because obviously there's risk involved in it. But you know, as you're very well uh, aware, you know, we focus on the retirement income planning side yeah. of things. So. Yeah, again, really positioning those retirement assets to provide a, a consistent income for folks in retirement, whether it's you know non-guaranteed income or it's exposed to some risk, or if it's guaranteed uh, income, you know, via some type of uh, you know insured product like an annuity. Uh, again, you know, our focus is really about positioning assets to you know, remain in line with people's risk to risk tolerance, but accomplish the goals and objectives they've laid out so that they can live the retirement that they've worked the last. You know, 40, 45 years for. Yeah, so how, how do you actually concerned. deal, uh, Dan, how do you actually deal with what you call diminished capacity in retirement? Yeah, so diminished capacity is something that I think is, is probably becoming more prevalent over the last 15 to 20 years. I think all of us know someone or have a family member that's been impacted uh, in one way, whether it's diminished capacity, cognitive decline, dementia, Alzheimer's. Uh, you know, it's, it's truly something I think come to fruition over the last you know, probably couple of, uh, a couple of decades here, it's been more recognized, more diagnosed. 
Yeah, but the concern is for folks, it's, you know, if they start to lose their, you know, mental cognitive state, it's who's going to decide for me if I'm unable to decide for myself. You know, in other words, who speaks on my behalf if I'm physically or mentally impaired, uh, impaired and, and can't make those decisions for myself? Um, you know, and it's not something that happens suddenly for a lot of people. Usually it is, it's diminished capacity or cognitive decline. And more times than not, it's not something that us as an, in an advisory role are able to notice. Um, you know, more, more often than not, it's someone in their inner circle that spots the decline. And, you know, they've got to have the, you know, the, I guess you could call it almost the courage, yeah. you know, to approach whether it's mom or dad or brother, sister or friend to say, Hey, I think you're slipping a little bit here. Let's uh, let's let's take a step back and reevaluate, you know, the future for you as to who's going to be making financial decisions. Because, you know, if, if it goes un, unnoticed or undiagnosed, it could, it could truly turn into financial dis- disaster. Disaster, absolutely. I mean, we had that in my family. My brother and I. We, you know, mom. Oh my gosh, so uh, strong-willed, and uh, w- would never ever allow anybody else to take over in that way. My dad, um, he recognized his uh, diminished uh, capacity even before, years before he was diagnosed with dementia. He was, uh, gosh, uh, late 70s, 80, in the 80s, yeah. And, uh, and fortunately, he and I, we had the conversation. He said, yeah, um, go ahead. And so I did take over and handled uh, all of his financial arrangements. So, except for one, yeah, except for a couple in the past, yeah, that came to haunt us. <laughs> Didn't realize he'd done a couple things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the uh, the first legal step, obviously, to take is is to you know pursue or, or look into establishing a power of attorney. Yes, um, you know, from a from a legal standpoint, especially to deal with you know, limited capacity, uh, the power of attorney is is one document that you know I talk to a lot of estate planning attorneys and they say it's probably the most overlooked estate planning document out there. Really? And in, in most cases, you know, the financial power of attorney is, is durable in nature, meaning that it stays in effect until either the client, um, you know, either recovers or, or ends up you know, passing away. Some states will actually allow for what's called a springing power of attorney, where the power of attorney only comes into place when the, you know, the principal account owner becomes incapacitated. Some states do, some states don't allow. What about it. Delaware? Because I think that would be, provide some peace of mind for older people who say, eh, my kid's made some bad decisions. I know he's 50 now, but eh, I don't know, he's still a punk kid. Does Delaware allow that one? I, I believe they do, yeah. uh, but I would confirm that specifically with an estate planning attorney. Gotcha. Uh, we do have a spring power of attorney that comes into place, and that's all going to be you know, a document that is prepared by a uh, by an attorney, by a lawyer. Uh, but you know, some of the issues that could you know come to play is you know is that what what powers do they actually give the power of attorney? You know, are they able to ability, uh, You know, do they have the ability to execute a Roth conversion? Uh, can they make a gift from an IRA as a distribution? Um, and it, it is. It's a very powerful document that really shouldn't just be a, you know fill in the blank sign here form. I've got power now. Um, you know, while someone does have their capacity, they really should make decisions as to, you know, what type of powers they want to grant with yeah. their power of attorney in that place. No, that's, that's, a, that's uh, a really good point. And again, uh, we, I, we did that with my dad. Okay, I did it. <laughs> and, and it worked out very well for him. Sometimes, you know what, sometimes you, you just got to trust your kid, you know? Yeah, you know, my uh, my family did the same thing for uh, for my mom's sister, my aunt, who unfortunately developed Alzheimer's in her, I believe it was kind of a mid to early 70s. Um, you know, they put the powers of attorney in place, and it was a good thing they did because it's a very aggressive form that she has now where, you know, sadly my parents went to go visit her last weekend, last week in North Jersey, and you know, she barely remembered who my mom was, and she asked my mom, you know, who's this guy with you? Oh, it's sad. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it is. It's just tough to see people go through that. Um, but it's good know, advice. And, and 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 Dan Simon with uh, Dan White and Associates. You know, Dan, you, know, you work with people on uh, retirement planning, so you got to have uh, you know people you trust who are attorneys that work on this level as well, because you guys work you know in tandem with these people too. So yeah, that's it. You you, you talk to your clients about this stuff then. Absolutely, all the time. And, you know, the other document, I'll just touch on it briefly, is, you know, establishing some type of, uh, of living trust. And, 
you know, that allows, you know, the account owner or the person establishing the trust uh, to not only be the grantor, the beneficiary, and the trustee, but, you know, upon, you know, them losing their you know, mental capacity, so to say, um, you know, there's a successor trustee that can step in and take over uh, and act on their behalf. So, you know, the power of attorney, the living trust, uh, all documents that, you know, I encourage people to look into. I mean, if dementia, Alzheimer's, that type of uh, you know, medical ailment runs in the family, you know, from what I've seen, it does tend to be genetic. Um, so you might want to explore, you know, those documents and, and seek uh, seek some advice or counsel there. Oh, no, that's on my dad's side of the family, not, not my mom's. I'm taking after, I, take, I take after my mom. I'm in denial. I'm sure you'll be fine, Making fun of myself, dude. No, don't ever be in denial. Go ahead. It's great advice, uh, Dan Simon. Dan White and Associates, uh, financial planners, financial advisors, specializing in retirement income. Um, Sunday morning, On the Money, Dan White uh, hosts Social Security Benefits and Changes in Marital Status. Uh, it can really affect your life in some uh, meaningful ways, good and bad. So make sure you're listening Sunday morning at 7 o'clock. On the Money with Dan White. Dan Simon, good talking to you, my friend. Be well. All right, Rick, take care. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the sunshine. Okay, you too. Well, no, you can't. You have to be there. Answer the phone, 888-690-8820. Someone calls for Dan Simon. You can't be outside. 888-690-8820. you got to answer the phone, dude. <laughs> take it easy. Okay, bye. You can open a window.